So like when somebody asks the question, how do I break in my glove? How should I break in my glove? My glove won't break in. Dude, I'm in the oh. same boat. Oh, what do you mean? You're not catching enough. It's not- <laughs> and here's the other piece of it. Relax. Like this thing is the most incredible piece to your puzzle here. Like, dude, you don't want this thing. If this thing was broken in in two weeks, it's a piece of garbage. Like relax, <laughs> like give it time to just do it. Oh man, it's taking forever. Good. That means it's a good piece of leather. Let's keep working it. You know, the worst, the worst thing that happens with gloves is the Christmas glove, right? Every kid gets a glove at Christmas. They go, yeah, I'm really excited to use this in spring. I'm like, Hey dog season starts in four weeks. Like we probably need to give that a little bit more time. So I always tell people, I'm like, dude, when your spring season ends, you know, buy a glove all summer, all fall, you catch bullpens with it and it'll be ready to go next spring. Right. And you just, if you're a guy that does one glove a year, like that's the time to do it. But yeah, you're yeah. right. Like, dude, go freaking play catch. Like, what are yeah, you talking like, about how to break yeah. it in? Yeah. Like, should, like, should I bake it? Should I wrap it? Should I? Hot water treatment? You shouldn't take it off your hand. Like, Bro, this, don't, it's self-explanatory. Don't, don't poison that leather with <laughs> okay. any are substance. Are you speaking from a place of like. Other than a baseball like, beater. Really, like, you're a glove. Uh, it's incredible. I don't know, connoisseur, I guess. You're a big glove guy, I'm assuming. Like you just you sound passionate about this subject, dude. I get it all the time. All, all these guys in here. I mean, we got hundreds of catchers in here, so it's like really? they're like holy smokes. They're literally like, oh, got a new glove. I'm like, great. Like, you know, give it time. What should I do? Get a mallet. You know, bang, bang, bang. You know, you can throw a ball into it. We'll have like you know, like I'll set up the the machine and like I'll I'll catch some off it. Just like like the machine's right here, and I'm feeding, uh-huh. and just catching right on it. You know, just like popping a bunch. Um, to kind of help them a little bit. But at the end of the day, I'm like, dude, just like Rome wasn't built in a day. Like this thing's going to be, you want it broken in a certain way. If you just catch with it, it's going to break in the way that you catch the ball. And that's, what's going to make it the way it is. If you've never walked around your house with your glove on, you're probably not going to make it. Bro, these guys put their glove in their bag still. I'm like, dude, what is your glove doing in your bag? Well, what are you talking about? I'm like, dude, I, when I was in college, I was that weirdo carrying my glove on the plane. Like, I, I mean, I ain't putting it down. You think I'm trusting, you know, TSA with my glove? Like, hell no. Like, it's insane. Oh, my God. But anyway, so. The little things, the little things. The little things. But that's what this position is about, right? I mean, that's literally, yeah. like, what this position is. And, like, those those guys that are a little quirky and, and protective of your glove, like, those are the guys that are going to be a little quirky and protective of every little detail on the field. Um, you, can, I know, you can trust the weirdo, man. You can trust the guy that's super weird. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> yeah. For sure. It's the guy that seems like they're buttoned up is the one you got to really be worried about. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.